my people and they told me that my visit in Nakuru would be incomplete without visiting Mastapo Kennels, the home of beasts. And so here I am at Master Po Kennel. So I'm going to knock in, I'm going to meet uh, the beasts. And uh, I hope you're still with me. I hope you're still watching. I hope you're still subscribing. And also do not forget to hit that notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. My name is Linda Kenyita and this is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. Stay with me. So let's go meet the dogs and uh, the handlers. Hi, hello Linda. Hi. Uh, Karibu Master for Kenya. Asante sana. Yeah, lakini kwanza precautions. Okay. <laughs> yep. Tunasema prevention is better than cure. Very true. Mm. So people this is happening we are uh, disinfecting. So you see, we are disinfecting against Pava because we're coming from visiting other kennels and uh, most probably we might find puppies around here and we've been talking about Pava and the things you need to do to prevent your kennel from being attacked by Pava. And so that is one thing. Every time you have a visitor, disinfect. <laughs> so, Karibu Sana, uh, as I always say, introduce yourself. Hello. I am Arthur Riwo of Master Pokenans Nakuru, a dog lover, enthusiast, and a dog breeder. A caribou in Yapakwetu. Santi, so let me ask this. Uh, for how long has Master Po Canines been in existence? Basically, three years because I, first, I, I got my first Master Po dog three years ago, that was 2018 in August. Mm -hmm. Yeah, that was bully master. Mm -hmm. So three years lifespan. Mm -hmm. uh, the first two years was was was, le was raising dogs because they bought puppies. Mm -hmm. So the last one year, when I was doing breeding, I've started having puppies. Mm -hmm. mm. And uh, so I, I always like to know, like the, the journey before, like what made you get your that first dog, and so like now this is master. Po. Uh -huh. I've always been a dog lover. I think it's something I've inherited. Not even I think it's something I've inherited from my dad. Because all along, my dad has, has loved dogs. Other to Pokot Kishikwa residentials in the apartments. We were having dogs in the apartments. Imagine in apartments of like, uh, I don't know, 200 people, and we are the only residents with the Kenel Sapochini. So, we had a dog, a German Shepherd, a long coach, and I grew up with the dog. He was, he was called Rex. I grew up with him. I, I, I developed the passion with dogs. All through it was just a passion thing, a passion. And then three years ago, I just decided to turn it into business. Mm. So which one was your first dog? My first dog was named Bully. Yeah, I bought him in Nakuru. Shortly after I decided to leave work and try something of my own, I decided to try something of my own, like the government is trying to tell people, create your own business, you know. So my first dog was Bully, a Boabel, and my second dog was also a Boabel, mm. Sasha, yeah. So you love Boabels, why? Boabels, yeah. Why? <laughs> I love Boabels because of their size. Actually, the first dog, sorry, the first dogs that I bought, eh, they, they all died. There were two bobbles, two puppies, mm -hmm. mm. two puppies. Mm -hmm. I, bo I bought two puppies from a breeder back in Kisumu. And after taking the puppies at three months old, I, I came to realize that I had done so many mistakes because I wanted to breed. I had bought a brother and a sister. The puppies had not been vaccinated. I did not. I did not, I was fresh of things like pavo. I was just an enthusiast, a passionist, you know. So they both died, but I did not lose the the inspiration. I went on to get the other. I renamed them Bully because the first bully died. So I renamed this one again, Bully and Sasha. 
and we are here we are three dogs down the line, three years down the line how many dogs do you currently have and what breeds is are you dealing specifically with bobels or later have you found other breeds that you brought in? I started basically as a bobber lover. I didn't even imagine I would settle into other breeds because I, lo- I loved the size. But slowly I got into the Great Danes. I got a, a, a female Great Dane. And then I just developed the beauty in the dogs. And that got me into the German Shepherd long coats. Yeah. And all, everything that we do is pedigree. No? Yeah. So all your dogs are registered? Yeah, all my dogs are registered, except the Great Dane. Because the Great Dane, I bought her a long time ago and I didn't know these things of registration and I didn't even know there were registered Great Danes around. <laughs> so let's go you introduce me to the dogs so that we can have this chat later after I've seen your dogs. Okay. Welcome to Masterpo Canines and these are our Masterpo dogs. Uh, you can see the great den. There is a bobble. There is another bobble. There is a solid black German Shepherd. There is a black and tan German Shepherd. There is a sable German Shepherd. There is a black and tan German Shepherd. I think I will just go inside. Okay. Uh, uh, this is the great den. She's called Master Pogaya. She's two years old. Uh, I have nothing much to say about her because she's one of my non-pedigree dogs. Pedigree meaning she doesn't have a known history. So I only know the parents, the father. The father came from Kisumu and the mother is from Nakuru. Beyond that, I don't even know the grandparents and so on. And this is Master Po Tokyo. This is a Boabel, a South African Boabel, a pedigree Boabel. Her father is Hore Poseidon, a South African import. And her mother is Acacia Tess, bred from Acacia Bobbles, from two South African imports, Sunjika Sonko and Mighty Maasai. I can go very yeah, deep, deep deep and deeper. She's a, I love her, I love her structure because she carries the, one of the old bloodline, the Cabaret bloodline and the Gretchen, together with the Vuzla bloodline. Ah, yeah. This is Tosland Jojo. Mm-hmm. I bought this young girl from Tosland Kennels, but she is now Tosland Jojo of Masterpo. <laughs> <laughs> My grand champion, actually, she is the grand champion 2021 of the Babel Association of East Africa, the grand female. She was number two overall and the best homebred Babel puppy. Her father is Elevation Casper, a South African import. Elevation Casper is a double grandson of a legendary brother known as Groenberg Rambo, one of the two times national champions in South Africa. And even more interesting is a mother's line. I owned a grandmother, Alasa Drubi Lepiona, who was a direct daughter of Bosvle Groot Kokedor, one of the most Agile and good moving barbells of all time. That's why she's a champion. She has the movement and she has the structure. This is Master Polexi, a solid black GSD. Ah, yeah. This is Mwari Cheka. Mwari Cheka is a full Serbian German Shepherd. Her father is a blue boss from House Milesevac, living in Serbia. And her mother is Mila vom Haus Mire Sevac from Serbia. She carries the Serbian line. She's a shorty, two years old, but she's on the lower side, but a very good producer. Look, look at the pigmentation. She carries the tan. She's one of the top producers of the kennel. The one that I've just exchanged is Vodka Devushka of Master Kennel. She's my only short coat. And my first registered German Shepherd dog. Yeah. There's always an attachment to the first one. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. Because even after I decided I won't do shortcuts anymore, I just decided to keep her. Being the first the registered dog. 
She's uh, a daughter of Athiva and Via and uh, Fika's faith. Athiva and Via is from a South African import boy known as Zico von der Wendestrasse. We call him the SPR. He's very tall. He's very, he's very tall. And this is her daughter. This is her daughter. She's a sable girl. She's called Alicia. Alicia Masterpo is her name. She was born, she was bred here and born here. And I kept her from the old litter because I intend to breed her with solid blacks to get even more solid black registered and, and sable registered female. She's my sable and solid, solid black foundation female. She's eight months old. And you can tell she's already bigger than the mom. Mm. I think that is the influence of the dad. The dad is a, a, guy, a guy from Kesuma Jams. I think you've been there. Yeah, the sable big boy known as Sabri Zircon. Yeah, yeah. You can see the similarity. Alicia. And then just beside us, we have our maternity wing. Our maternity wing is standing just beside us. And in front of us is a female known as the Souza Queen Master Po. You, you've been from the Souza Kennel. You've seen Bendel Nora. <laughs> She's a daughter of Bendel Nora. And her father is a Serbian import known as Rocky from Brumenland, a two times European champion. So she's on her way to becoming a champion. Bendel Nora is on her way to becoming a champion too. She's uh, 19 months now and a first time mom. Yeah, yeah, she delivered at, at 16 months because her puppy is three months old. And this is her puppy. <laughs> <laughs> My big boy that I kept from the litter is known as Master Po Chelsea. His father is Baron Sarge and the mother is Jerry. We call, we call her Jerry. <laughs> this is another little guy. Come here, come here, bingo. Come here, bingo. A, a small breed. Yeah, this is a toy breed. This is a toy breed. A, a companion to this, my guy. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. This is a West, West Highland area. Many people like to call them the Maltese, but they are not the Maltese. It's not the original Maltese. <laughs> yeah. And then on maternity wing two, we have some Rotula puppies. <laughs> this is a puppy then. <laughs> yeah, I have some Rotwella puppies. These are East African Kennel Club registered Rotwellers. Yeah, the litter is available. Some are booked and some are still available. Yeah, the father is Johnny Ivor from Kisumu. And the mother is Master Pochop. She's Recapitating after heavy maternity. It was a heavy litter of nine puppies. And I think you are remaining with four or five, I don't know. Something like that. This is the mother. She's recapitating after a heavy nursery. You can see. Her head is not that exaggerated. So now, before we move on, Remind me his name and uh, like okay curiously uh, uh, like uh, what happened to to him? This is a disease. Mm -hmm. It started as an edema. It has a a burning like in burning like effect. Huh? So the skin was like dropping off, uh, like rotting and dropping off. Uh, that was after a surgery that she had. Yeah, because she had a surgery. She had a blot on the neck. Mm -hmm. So, she, you know, she's a heavy dog. She took a lot of anesthesia in, this, in the surgery, more than was needed, eh? and she was pregnant. So all the weight 
all the weight came on this side there. Yeah? Uh, so the, the skin developed the edema. And even after healing, the scars remained. Yeah, she's a scar, scar face, scar lady now. <laughs> now, keeping dogs for the three years that you've been keeping dogs, uh, from your first dogs to dying, how has been the journey? The journey has been hectic because <laughs> <laughs> that's I can say that I can say because keeping in mind for three years, the first two years I've, I've just been raising dogs. No, 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 no income from them that I'm getting. No profits. I'm just using my cash to raise them, keep them healthy, and so that they can reach their breeding age. Because my dogs are breeding dogs, you know. So I bought them as puppies, started them young, raised them the way I desire, trained them until now. So now we are in the breeding ages. So hopefully in the next two, three years we'll see more income. But as you as you've seen, you're already having puppies. Yeah, the the journey has been hectic. Lo lots of diseases. Lots of challenges in feeding because the, because of the financial constraints, you know, COVID-19 as it has had, it has come in the within the three years. Two of the three years have been COVID-19. Yeah, so the journey has been hectic, but we are hoping for the best. Now, when it comes, you've said all your dogs are breeding dogs. You you specifically said like these are breeding dogs. Now and you bought them when they were puppies. Now raising those dogs for them to be able to give you litters and also for them to for you to be able to maintain their health and actually be able to, along the way to nurture them. How what is the process now? How can I say like ah I want a breeding dog? What's what's the process? The A to Z of now having that healthy dog. A uh, breeding dog having a breeding dog it tells a lot, huh? First and foremost, and something that is very key in having a breeding dog is the pedigree. The pedigree meaning you can have the ancestral information of this dog, you know, all the way down to four, ten generation pedigrees with each other. Like the pedigree and the bloodlines will allow you to know which lines are fertile, which lines are not fertile, which lines carry carry certain diseases, and which lines carry not certain diseases. Like the Bobel is a very funny breed. It has a lot of uh, diseases, eh? especially the female. You get the 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 hip dysplasia, you get the vaginal prolapse, things like that that are not needed in a breeding bitch. You see, so you have you have to first look at the pedigree, look at the dam line, look at lines that do not have things like vaginal prolapse, settle for such certain lines. So. When buying a puppy, first you have done your research, looked at the pedigree, decided on which puppy to get. That is step number one. Then now comes the challenge of raising the puppy to adulthood. The puppy has to be healthy as a breeding dog. It has to be healthy. Regular deworming, when it's, because mostly the puppies are bought at three months. At that age, a puppy will be dewormed at monthly until six months, then you can do two months, three months intervals. So deworming is very key. Uh, you have to look for things like ticks, mm? because diseases like ilicosis, tick fever, those are diseases that hinder pregnancy. Mm? You can find that a bitch has been mated, she's, she's heavily pregnant, but once she catches that tick fever, she will miscarry. It, it, it is that bad for a breeding bitch. Huh? So things like tick fever, you have to take care of them. And the general health of the dog. Huh? Yeah. The temperament of a breeding bitch is very key. Huh? You, don't, you do not need a breeding bitch that is uh, more like a security dog. Eh? This is a bitch, this is a type of bitch that has puppies, is in the maternity, but once it hears something outside, all the instincts are on the strange or something, not the puppies. That is not a perfect breeding bitch. You know? mm. Once you have the pedigree, you can trace the dog. Like, like this, this, this dog, eh? uh, I can jump to the 
the the great great gr- the great great grandmother of this dog eh? is a dog named uh, Elbowini which was mated to Bosley Good Crocodile mm-hmm. it was a young dog so a dog like Elbowini you can go to the internet mm-hmm. look at that dog mm-hmm. search the, uh, search the details mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. and get to know how the dog was mm-hmm. how many liters it had mm-hmm. was, was it a good breeding bitch mm-hmm things like that mm. uh, so as you can see we are members of the bobel association of east africa mm-hmm. and this is a bobel mm-hmm. and we are also breeding members of the east africa kennel club mm-hmm. yeah so it's just really we are, we are club members eh? okay. yeah no let's now when when it comes to taking care of the pe- uh, the puppies once they are born what is the process like now for how long do you stay with the puppies before now you can release them for rehoming ah the process is hectic the process starts on the night of delivery mm-hmm. <laughs> uh, because most of them deliver at night you are lucky if your dog will deliver during the day but most of them have seen deliver at night so you have to be on you have to to be like an helper mm? you can look from a distance until there are some complications then you can come in like for first time moms it can be challenging uh, a mom can give birth for the first time doesn't doesn't even know what to do with the puppy you know doesn't even know to cut the cord you have to get in there you have to cut that cord mm-hmm. you see you have to remove that puppy from the sack sometimes it is the the, the sack has overstayed it is out of air you have to pump the chest of the puppy to to try and recipitate it you know mm. so the work starts on the one or the or on the bath night uh, after bathing basically the mom will the instincts will kick in that is where a good breeding bitch comes in the instincts will just keep kicking she'll clean the pups uh, nothing will be major until three weeks or mm. the mother will do a thing until three weeks but you have to constantly watch is she sleeping on the puppies is the kennel warm is the kennel wet you know things like those after three weeks now the challenge comes in because most of the puppies start winning at three weeks meaning they start getting their foreign food eh? because they have been dealing with the the mom's milk eh? and you know the, the mom being fully vaccinated it passes down that antibody antibodies to the pups eh? so when the pups starts winning it's on our own defense system now so this is like power now become can become a challenge you know that is where extra care now has to come in yeah. have your dogs going out who is coming to your kennel how secure is your maternity mm. no when it comes to now let's say things like power vaccinations ha- when do we start the vaccination the vaccination the regimes depends with the infestation of a, of the area if the the area is heavily infested let's say you had a previous case of pavo we uh, it is advised to start the regime earlier three weeks maybe four weeks but if you do not have uh, a case of pavo the area is secure you can start at four weeks you repeat the vaccination at six weeks then do a DHLP shot huh? at nine weeks and another one at 12 weeks. And then at sh- from 12 weeks, the pup is ready f- to be rehomed. So for, for the new buyer, let's talk to the new buyer. Like now you have to hand over. What advice now from there when I take home that puppy, what do I do? Uh, do uh, is there any more? Let's talk rabies because amongst those 12 weeks, you have not mentioned rabies. Yeah, at what time do I start thinking about rabies when it comes to puppy? <laughs> Rabies is included in the 12th week. As you can see, we have posters here. We have posters here that we give our clients, Master Pokelens. So once we vaccinate the puppies, uh, like Pavo, it, it has a stamp eh, from the district veterinary officer, Nakuru, meaning a, a, a government vet has done this. So it is secure of all the vaccine va- diseases that should be vaccinated that is pavo dhlp and rabies and dhlp contains uh, f- four diseases but pavo is among them so from 12 weeks old 
basically in terms of diseases nothing much to care about no the puppy will just be feeding good feeding good feeding and good care good feeding and good care when she was undergoing her medical procedure she was pregnant was she able to carry through with the pregnancy did she get the puppies yeah she's one very tough bitch our vet surgeon advised us that she could not pull through with the pregnancy all the puppies cannot make it due to the ana- too much anesthesia that had been administered uh, and being a huge bitch she hid that pregnancy very well you could not even tell that she was pregnant so since the vet had told us that she was not pregnant we just decided to to assume that way but the last one week all of us suddenly she started booming oh. hmm? we like ah no this dog is not pregnant this dog is not pregnant the last three days it's not there anymore again <laughs> so we did not even take her to the maternity wing so an evening as i was sitting as i was sitting outside here star gazing and listening just chilling with one of my dogs i'm I'm, I'm hearing a puppy crying rushing to the main kennels it's jojo she's delivering chop chop to the maternity i prepare myself for a long night she did manage to deliver seven puppies but unfortunately due to the strong medications that she was undergoing the puppies came out so weak they died of something that we call fading syndrome they just failed to thrive <laughs> <laughs> they just failed to thrive but she confirmed something very important she is a confirmed producer she is a breeding bitch <laughs> when you're looking for a for a sire like you see a dog and now as a breeder you want to improve the quality of that breed what what, what things are you looking for before you decide now i want studs from that dog actually that is a very good question because it separates breeders from dog matters there are just people my my family is on it i'm looking for the nearest male available and that is not something that uh, we do at master pun because being pedigree dogs we have to look for compatibility we have to decide how, we have to envision eh, the puppies even before they are born what do you want to improve on is it the bone is it the coat is it the pigmentation is it the temperament and then you choose the the sire based on the the things that you want to you want to improve on like if you are talking of a bobel that is in in front of us a bobel as every dog breed has something that you call the breed standards how the dog should look how the top line should be how the angulation should be how the chest should be see like this is the rear angulation you find that a, you have a female that is flat huh? and and you, and you, as a, as a known of the female you, you are working on size rather than improving <coughs> the angulation you are going for another bigger dog with a flat flat angulation things like that is what we look for first we look at the the phenotype the dog in general and then the pedigree the genotype yeah we go to the diet of these dogs what is their diet like <laughs> their diet actually I'm a big fan of uh, what you call wet meal, huh? wet food. I, I'm not a fan of the dry foods, the kibbles and such. So I cook. Huh? I cook for my dogs. I give them meat and rice, basically. That is their most basic food, meat and rice. And I add some little bit of veggies inside there and, and some supplements of vitamins and calciums. Mm-hmm. Just that. Yeah. Now, I I know your members mem- member of clubs you've explained that so you know like there are rules about when it comes to breeding dogs yes. and uh, maybe you can take us through the rules that you have when it comes to breeding and why these rules are necessary. Yeah, true. That is that is very good. Uh being a member of kennel club you have to adhere to their breeding rules and regulations and uh, they differ from club to club. like the bobel association of east africa for a female for a breeding female huh? you can only breed her once in a year S- such are the regulations that s- 
uh, breeders that are not member uh, kennel club members are not at there to you, know, you find a breeder can breed a bitch twice or even thrice but it, it diminishes the health the general health of the dog you know pregnancy is heavy yes mm, pregnancy is heavy you have to give the dog ample time to to regain after pregnancy mm -hmm. so uh, the rule is being bred only once per year and like the burbul you, there is a certain age limit that the puppy has to reach before you can start breeding, mm -hmm. which is uh, 18 months mm -hmm. for the burbul, and for the East Africa Kenyan Club it's 16 months. Mm -hmm. See, but it is it is advised that you wait even a little longer, mm -hmm. two or three years old before you start breeding for the female to be mature. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Uh, and what about the deadline now? Let's say, at what point do you retire? There is a point, there is a point of re retiring too. Uh, past eight years, uh, there is no more breeding for the female. And the female cannot have more than five liters in her lifetime. Oh. Uh, okay. Uh, that's according to the East African Kennel Club. What about studs? Do they have limits? Um, it's freestyle. Yeah, for a stud, for a stud male, a stud male can only start uh, start his stud services after eight months of age, and uh, he can he can go uh, a stud male can do that even to 11, 12 years old. Mm -hmm. uh, his, his time span is a little bit longer. Yeah. Now, out of experience, let's talk to maybe an inexperienced dog lover who wants to buy a dog and they do not understand where to buy a dog. They just see dogs being advertised and they go by without knowing the origin of the dogs. Are there, let's say somebody out there is breeding a dog three times in a year. Is there any health um, factors when it comes to the puppies and the dogs you're going to acquire? Yes, yes, yes. There is a lot of health factors because first it's generally fatigue it's generally uh, destroying the beach eh? because, as I said before, pregnancy is heavy. And you find a beach is, uh, has, has, has been bred, she has puppies that are three months old. That female again is on heat. And, and this is another, we call them backyard breeders, is going to breed again. That female has, has not even recovered the, the body has not even regained okay she may be huge she may be the body may have been regained but the, the nutrient wise in, internally you know things like that eh? uh, so even the puppies i'm thinking the puppies also the, the, the puppies they will diminish the quality of the puppy will definitely diminish mm -hmm. yeah once you do back to back breeding mm -hmm. you find that the the second litter will not do as good as the first litter mm -hmm. Yeah, the puppy will be a little bit of your view. Yeah. <laughs> now, advice to the dog owners. Now, when you take a puppy home, how are you dealing with it? Have you ever had to? Now, I know it's it's your first time. This is your first year that you 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 rehoming puppies. How has been the experience far? What, what are the feedbacks? Have you had somebody saying like, ah, "This is too much. I can't come get your puppy." <laughs> Uh, no, 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 I can't say that because one of the very key things that we look for in a breeding bitch is temperament. Temperament meaning that puppy uh, can be a companion to the new family, uh, will not be a challenge, easily trainable, will be defensive when needed. So, see, so puppies, find most of our puppies are sweet. For those that are sold, Positive, positive replies. <laughs> so I'm also, I'm also now thinking your target is people who are looking for companion pets, not working dogs. No, 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 no. Mm -hmm. um, across the, I cut across the line. Mm -hmm. I cut across the line because whether you're looking for a working, working dog, mm -hmm. I have some working dogs. Whether you're looking for some show lines, mm -hmm. I have them in stock. Mm -hmm. For companion, the toy breeds have them in stock. I think I just cut across if, the line. So I'm like, if if I'm thinking like I need a a, a pet, a dog. Uh -huh. you just call Master Po. <laughs> 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 okay. Now the breeds that you're keeping, why those specific breeds and not any other breed? First, uh, my breed of choice is the Burbul, mm -hmm. and it's the first breed that I kept. Mm -hmm. 
I love the bulbul because of its massive size and its protective nature. Originally, this dog was bred as a farm dog to work in the wild, yeah. So they can endure a lot. Yeah? They can endure. They can endure a lot, and they can really protect. And they are strong dogs that do not fear. So I love them because of that. And then for the German Shepherd long coats, I think it is just a thing of beauty. <laughs> uh, that because most of the show, show dogs that you see today, the long coats, have lost that working temperament. A dog can't even protect you. Mtakimbizo na mboyako. Unless it's a working line German Shepherd, which are the short coats, and I, 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 I'm not a, a huge fan of that. For the Great Danes, again, it's a thing of size. I think I, I go for the size. I just go for the size. Yeah. <laughs> Give me a parting shot for 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 future dog dog breeders, for for you as a young man who's just a young breeder. What vision do you have? Actually, first for myself, I have a big vision mm -hmm. because I envision to become a breeder. What you are doing at the moment is not even breeding because breeding breeding now starts to happen four five generations down the line, and that takes years. Mm -hmm three, four, five years. You cannot breed three generations in a year. Mm -hmm. That means a father, grandson, you know, you can't do that in a year because a, a dog like this has to be 18 months, a puppy mm -hmm. has to be 18 months before you breed it. Mm -hmm. And then another 18 months before you, <laughs> before you breed another progeny of that puppy. So it takes years. But we envision to improve the breed, mm -hmm. be in the game for as long as you can and keep our own bloodlines so that in 10, 10, 15 years to come, all the dogs that will be Master Pokenels will be having their bloodlines from here today. As you only look at that pedigree, it will be dogs that have been Master Po bred all through. Uh, I, 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 know their, I know their strengths, their weaknesses. Yeah. <laughs> I, 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 I I didn't think you can do that. So there's a way you, by in, in a few years' time, like all the dogs that will be here, you will not have acquired them from anywhere. Yeah, 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 you can do that. <laughs> you can do that. Huh? That is something that you call a breeding program. Mm -hmm. Yeah, once you're a breeder, you have to be to have a breeding program. Mm -hmm. you, ju you don't just make dogs. Mm -hmm. uh, you see, like you have, I have two females mm -hmm. and a male. There is something we call a breeding program. You can put that male on this female, mm -hmm. keep a daughter. Mm -hmm. That male on the other female, keep a son. Mm -hmm. Line breed the two or outcross. You know, there are very many ways of doing breeding. There is line breeding, out outcrossing, in breeding. Mm -hmm. Yeah, so you have to do your research. Oh, okay. There is one thing we say, mm -hmm. and uh, we learned it from a, a very senior breeder. Mm -hmm. We are the custodians of our chosen breeds for a short period of time. Mm -hmm. It is only proper that we hand down this information in a proper way that it was given to us. Mm -hmm. So breed that dog well. If, 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 you had, if you can't improve the breed, at least maintain it. Don't diminish the breed. Mm -hmm. uh, because 20, 30 years from now, we will not be breeding. Our sons and kids will be doing that thing. If you have destroyed the breed, you have destroyed the temperament. You have destroyed. Uh, so we are the, the custodians, as the custodians of our, of the breeds for a short period of time. You have to breed right, and you have to improve the breed. <coughs> awesome. mm -hmm. hey, I'm your girl, Linda Kenyita, bringing you all the information you require to know about dogs. So when you're going to get a dog, when you're going to acquire a dog, when you decide. Um, let me have a collection of dogs like I do want to have in the future. <laughs> you get to know the information. And this is Dog TV Kenya, the best documentary channel for all dog lovers. Keep watching, keep subscribing, and do not forget to hit the notification bell to get notified every time we upload a new video. And also, if you'd like to partner with us, remember you can send us an email at Kenya dog TV at gmail.com and also you can send us a DM throughout our social media handles which is dog TV Kenya this is dog TV Kenya the best documentary channel for all dog lovers bye